Hey there, everyone. Chris McDonald here, back for your Timer Tip Tuesday, specifically on the Timer Dashboard. Today's agenda is um, kind of what is the purpose of a Timer account and the Timer Dashboard, how to create a Timer account, where to find your account if it's already created, um, and then we'll go into the dashboard itself. Um, there's only four tabs underneath the dashboard, um, races, software, settings, and financial. I did put an additional bullet point under settings because I do think this is the most important thing on the uh, timer dashboard, and that is adding secondary timers. So then we'll go through the upcoming training and we'll take some time for Q&A. And if I need to hop out and do like a live demo on a timer account, I can do that as well. So the purpose um, is to have direct and limited, um, direct but limited access to events that you'll be working with. Um, and this is through both the run signup dashboard and race day scoring. So for those of you that have been getting flash drives or um, uh, CSVs emailed um, or even paper forms, there's no need for that anymore. I mean, if you're gonna continue taking paper forms, be my guest. But um, in regards to data that is on run signup that you as the timer need access to, um, having a timer account allows you to um, integrate into the back end of run sign up and have access, limited access um, to that participant data. It'll give you um, most of the race day tools um, and then a couple other uh, items as well. You won't have access to things like uh, financials and, uh, and you know, things like that, which as a timer, you shouldn't need access to. If for some reason you do, you can always ask for elevated access from the race owner. Um, if you do need more access and they need help, you know, like setting up the race itself um, and going through the race wizard, um, you can go one of two paths, either A, they set up the, the skeleton of the race and then add you um, as a race director, or number two, uh, you can set up the race and then add them as a race director. Um, so just two ways of getting to that same uh, point where you have full access. Um, and then also, uh, you can add secondary users. And again, we bullet pointed this on the last slide. And this is so other timers underneath your company name have the same access to races. Um, so, and that's when a race owner goes in on step one of the race wizard at the very bottom and selects your timing company name um, from the dropdown. And so if they, if they select, you know, best timing services or something like that and and you are the timing owner if you go into your timing tab you have access to it as do all of your other secondary timers which is super helpful so you don't have to give out your um your username and password to your to your other timers so um creating a timer account if you don't already have one you can go to www.runsignup.com timer if you don't have one, it will drop you into either this page or a, and have a button at the bottom that says, you know, need to create a timer account, click here. So when you click this here, this will open up um, and you'll put your, your timer name, this is the company name, uh, the contact person, usually the lead contact, your, uh, your uh, timer company email um, and website. You can, have, you can put in a contact us URL if you have one specifically for your company. Um, the state that you're located in, your zip code, you can put a short description um, about your timing company. You can update so it shows up in the in the run sign up um, search results. And then you can select up to five states that you service. So that way, if people are looking for a timer, um, they can then find your information when, when filtering by state. You click that create a timer button. And shortly thereafter, um, you, if you go into the top right corner under your um, profile, you will see a timer button there. Um, it might take a second once you create it, but it will be there very shortly thereafter. Um, so once you have that, you can click on that icon, click timer, and um, click go to dashboard for the timing account you wish to review. So um, you, for any of these, you can go in and, and I just made an additional um, uh, timing account, and that way I can go in and see these races. Um, now, there's also a button here, need to create another timer account, click here again. So if for some reason you need a secondary timer account, you could, you could do that as well. This is for a whole separate company. So for a race owner, 
at the bottom of step one in the wizard, this is what it looks like. Just at the very, very bottom of step one where it says save and continue or they can save as draft. Just above that, there is a um, select timer. If they already have a timer, they can go to change timer and there is a search function right there and it will pop up. If, they, if, you know, if your name is you know, best timing services, they type in BEST, it will be one of the things that they could select as a dropdown. As soon as they, they select that and hit save and continue, um, then you will get notified by email and you will have backend access to um, the, the timer level um, data on the backend of run sign up. So some troubleshooting in your account. So if you don't see the timer option, some of you guys might be saying, oh, I'm gonna go and see if I have that right now. Um, so kind of a, a progress tree here, um, are you the primary timer or the company owner? And if the answer is yes, then have you created a timing account? And if the answer is yes and you still don't see it, you need to log out and log back in. Also, keep in mind, if you decided to use a separate email address, then it might not link because um, everything is linking through your profile. So if you created a completely new profile just to create this timer account, then they're gonna be separated out. So ideally you're using the same profile um, for all things, that way you can get everything in one login. Um, so if you haven't created a timer account, that's why you can't get in, you need to go and create one. Um, for many of you that have been on for the past uh, four or five weeks under the, the new timer training, um, you might be a secondary timer for a, 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 a bigger timing company. And if you don't have access, um, you need to ask the lead timer or the company owner to add you as a secondary timer and ask them to let you know once they've done it because you will get an invite in your email. Um, and then after you've been added, um, that primary timer can go in and see if you've accepted the, uh, the email notification. Um, if you still don't see it, log out and log back in. And then again, ensure you're logging in with the correct profile as a secondary timer. So going through here, and we'll get to that adding people, it's under the settings tab. So we're just gonna work our way down the dashboard. So once you've created an event, you'll drop into the dashboard and you'll see um, under the manage races, you'll, um, you'll see a list of all the races your timing uh, company has access to. And each one will have two things. One is the race dashboard, that's pretty simple. And the other is actions. The actions, when you click it, it opens up and allows you to do a number of things that are specifically timing related, such as uh, your BIV assignment options, you can post results, sign corrals, um, set up race day registration, race day check-in, and set timer fees. Now, all of these are um, accessible from the race dashboard. These are just like quick links or hot links to get you directly to these things for that event. Um, you also get a little bit of uh, participant data in here. So you get your event name, location, date, the event logo, how many registrants are currently in, and how many have there been lifetime. You also get some information at the top about your um, your total races. So this account has 194 different races associated with it, with currently just shy of 7,000 registrants, and it is timed, you know, 190,000 participants. So after we go through manage uh, or races, we have scoring st uh, scoring statistics. So if this first top piece is what it looks like if you've never timed a race, if it's a brand new, brand new. Uh, account and you've never timed a race underneath this name. So you can see that there are no race scoring statistics in the timer account. So once you start scoring with either race director or race day scoring, it will start posting data into your past races. And you'll have a lot of information there, which is super helpful. Um, and you have a link. All of these are links to the run sign up race results. You have your race date, how many individual reg um, and individual finishers, how many relay registrations, how many relay finishers. Then what you use to time. So in these scenarios, it was race day scoring and the version of race day scoring that was used to time. The chip system that was used and then your reg partner. So this is a link to the registration dashboard. So that will take you directly into the dashboard as well. And so this other um, gives us on the back end uh, a little bit of information about ways you set up your race. Um, and so 
this um, this was set up in 2020 as um, race director race 88, and it had three segments associated with it. So um, again, th this has some old data in there from previous years um, because previously it was timed with race director, but now it's being timed with race day scoring. Moving on down into software. Now, one other huge thing about the timing dashboard is this is where you get race day scoring downloads. So what you end up doing is that secondary timer, if they need um, race day scoring on their computer, um, they're gonna go in, they're gonna log in after you've added them as a secondary timer. You, they are going to come to the software, they're gonna log into their timer um, side, get into software and go to download. They'll click on the scoring agreement and they'll hit download. Actually, they'll hit, click on the scoring agreement and two boxes will open here, uh, Windows and Mac. Uh, this download is actually for uh, race directors. So when they click the one of these two boxes that pop up once they um, select the agreement, that's where, that's where it will download. So you also have your license management. So this gives you your serial number, your version number, um, who it's registered to, and when the last purchase was. And then finally, underneath software, you have purchase subscription. So you can set up a timer account and not have um, race director or race day scoring. So if you need those things, you can go to purchase subscription and it will open up this page and um, you can select all options necessary to purchase a subscription to uh, the race day suite. Okay, so the big one here, adding secondary access. So under settings and under access, we have the timer owner here, and we have invite secondary owner where we need to have the email first and last name. So I, I told Matt, hey Matt, I'm gonna add you to, um, to my timer account here. So I have at this point invited him to be a part of this uh, timing account. He is not yet accepted yet. I know that because it's still under invited. He now has the ability to go into his um, email and either accept or decline, um, accept or decline whether he wants to join onto this. So- I'm gonna go ahead and accept right now, Chris. So you what's that? I'm gonna go ahead and accept right now so they can see how it looks like when I do. Okay, I'll uh, I'll pull that up here in a second. Um, so, and it, it since he's accepting it now, when we get to the end of the slide, I'll open up the uh, the web onto this page, and you'll see he's listed as a secondary owner. So, under access, the next thing down is timer info. This is where you can put in all of your information about your timing company. Um, this is searchable on the run sign up site um, and there was a question about uh each secondary timer has to sign an agreement um so they do they do have to uh sign the agreement for any time you download for race day scoring um and that's basically saying that run sign up owns the um the software like that we we created the software and it's our intellectual property um it's not for any of the data that you generate or anything like that it's, it's just for the software itself um, so, uh, under timer info, this is where you can update things as they display. Um, and then you can also save the timer info. You can put your image, your logo, and this will show in the search results. If you select show in search results. And then just underneath this is, um, timer info. It gives all the people underneath your timer account. And if they're certified, if they're run signup certified, the race joy certified, all of that information. And so um, for your company, you will get check marks down here at the bottom, as long as you have active subscriptions and people that are actively um, certified in each one of these. And you'll have badges on the search functions um, of run sign. So um, people can, can filter by uh, race companies or timing companies that are race day scoring certified, that are race joy certified, um, so all of that's there. It doesn't matter if you as the primary are signed off on it. Um, if one of your secondary timers is the one that gets um, 
certified, that's fine. As long as someone within your company is certified, I would strongly advise you to have each of your timers certified that um, it, it, there's no cost. It just um, gets everybody up to speed and everyone knows and has been trained in a similar, similar fashion. So you also have API keys. I've blacked out some of it just in case, but um, for those of you that are building out um, API um, uh, code and whatnot for your personal website, um, there is a link to the API documentation um, for those details and you'll have your key and your secret um, as well. So uh, that way you can dump data directly out of um, your, your timer account as needed. So under financial, the first option is set up. If you've not set things up before, it drops you into an update payment info screen where you can set up who you're paying and what the address is. You hit save info and it saves everything in here. Um, and so the financial side of this is to set up um, timer specific uh, payments. Um, and basically this is uh, add-on fees that can be um, put into processing. And so there's two options under processing fee additions. There's setup and reports. Under setup, this is allows for timer pricing. And this link to the blog which will uh, you'll have after the fact, so that will be added in. Um, and this is where you want to go to learn about how timer pricing works. Um, it, it's fairly lengthy, and it's um, it's an interesting way to possibly offset costs um, for you as a timer, um, so that you're not invoicing the event, um, you know, tons and tons of money after the fact. Um, so it, it's another option for you if you want it. Uh, then you also have the ability to click on reports, and this um, runs um, reports on uh, the finances that have been generated. Um, you And then once you already have um, something set up, you will see fees that are listed. And if you click change fees, you'll, you'll go back to the, um, the original setup for uh, timer pricing. And so with these uh, reports, you have the reports based off of which fee revision. So I only have one that I created today. Um, so if I was to run that report, um, I would see any revenue generated from that specific uh, fee structure. And then finally, um, payments. And this is any payments that have been made to your timing company for these fees. And it'll give a breakdown of that payment ID, the date, the amount, who it was paid to, and any other info. Um, and you can search by uh, specific dates. So this company um, was created very recently, so it doesn't have any payments. Um, but if they did, that's where they would be listed, and uh, in one you know simple file. So um, with that being said, that that wraps up this side of it. I am going to jump in after I tell you guys. Um, or remind you guys about the uh, symposium. Uh, registration is open. So you can either do one of two things. You can go to runsignup.com, raise Florida, Orlando, run sign up winter symposium. You can Google run sign up winter symposium or on our homepage, if you go to runsignup.com, learning and um, conferences, it is a link underneath that. So um, registration, there is um, a price increase on November 1st, I believe. So you have right about one week before that price increase. Um, so do be mindful of that if you are planning on coming. Um, it's gonna be great to see everyone in person again. So we're really excited about that. Um, and uh, it's January 25th and 26th. So um, we will be doing something a little special for certified timers. Um, and also if you've been hesitant to make any changes on you know what you do as a timer or you wanna see things in real life, um, we have a really, really in-depth demo room that takes um, both race directors and timers through a full on-site um, registration demo, uh, check-in, bib assignment, um, packet pickup scenario. You get to, to look at demos of, of RaceJoy, um, the photo platform, you know, uh, both both digital bibs and um, and uh, uh, certificate, finisher certificates. So all of these things um, you can go and play around with 
Um, but then on top of that, uh, we are we will be doing the sweet run again. Um, and this is uh, kind of a pun off of the race day suite. So um, last time around, I think we had green um, green uh, donuts for everybody, and it was a huge hit. And all the race directors went and ran, and all the timers went and came and hung out and just watched and asked questions and clicked on things as this because we're gonna we're gonna do a real race at 6 a.m. You know, bibs on people. They're gonna go run. We're gonna have mats down. We are going to actually use real data in a live setting and we're gonna we're gonna time the people that want to go run um i think last time we had like 150 people go run so it was a it was a great data set and then um i believe uh, throughout the day we'll be kind of coming back to that data and and talking about what you can do with that data so um it should kind of all wrap in together and give you a really good understanding of um of how to use the race day suite so before I do any questions, I'm going to X out of this and I'm going to go in and remember Matt said that he accepted. So if I go into access, see how I don't have invited, invited uh, people anymore. I only have a secondary owner right there. And let's say um, Matt decides, you know, he's sick of timing. He's going to go, uh, he's going to go start a job as an underwater basket weaver, all I have to do is click this X button to revoke secondary access to Matt. So do I want to delete it? Yes, remove. And now Matt no longer has access. Um, and again, that blog post in terms of timer pricing, there is a lot of information about timer pricing, how to set it up, um, and, and great ways of, uh, of using it. And then the last tab I have open is just the winter symposium. Um, and so lots of information about uh, venue and it's in Orlando in January. So it's usually a bit warmer. The, uh, the um, parks aren't too far away if you're coming down to have some getaway time with your family. So all that is uh, there this January. So any other questions? It looks like we've gotten through all the ones that have been asked online. Any other questions from people out there? No? All right, well, uh, thank you so much for joining us today um, on the Timer Tip Tuesday on Timer Dashboard. And uh, be on the lookout, we will be doing some additional training um, leading into turkey trot season. Um, but overall, uh, our biggest push right now is keep an eye on that symposium. And um, it, it's gonna be a really, really great symposium after being off for 18 plus months of symposium time. So take care and we'll talk to you soon.